Hello and welcome to this video on why you should not dichotomize continuous variables. My name is Christian Geiser. I'm an instructor with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. I usually talk about multivariate statistical analysis including structural equation modeling, factor analysis, multi-level modeling and latent class analysis. If this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel. Also don't forget to check out the description for additional resources including a link to my free weekly statistics newsletter as well as courses that I teach for Quantfish. In this video, I want to talk about dichotomization of continuous variables and why this is something that you should avoid at all cost. What does dichotomization mean? It means that we have a previously continuous variable or a previously ordinal variable with more than two categories that we dichotomize such that we obtain only two groups. So for example, you might have uh, age as a continuous variable, age measured in years, or you might have intelligence scores, IQ scores as continuous scores, and then uh, you may go ahead and say, okay, I'm gonna do a median split and I'm gonna put all the people who are below the median in group one and all the people who are above the median in group two, and so then I can compare two groups, either in case of an independent variable, you could then use a t-test to compare the means on some outcome variable between the two groups, or you could, if the variable were a dependent variable, you could use logistic regression to predict group membership. And that's what is often done in practice. Now, why is this a bad idea? Why should you not do this? I want to explain this based on an example so that it becomes clearer how this is or in which way this is a bad idea. So let's assume that we have IQ scores as an independent variable and perhaps we want to predict job success based on IQ score. So is it the case that individuals who have higher IQ scores have higher job success? For example, do they have higher income in dollars as an outcome variable? And so then what would happen if you were to use the dichotomization approach is you would, for example, conduct a median split. The median in a normal distribution obviously is here in the middle. And so at this median, you would then split the distribution into two groups, group one on the left hand side, the lower scoring group and group two on the right hand side, the higher scoring group. And then you could compare the two groups with a t-test with regard to their income in dollars. And you could look at whether group one has a lower mean than group two and you could conduct that significance test using a t-test. You could calculate an effect size measure such as Cohen's D or Cohen's Delta and then you could look at to see whether there is a relationship between IQ scores and job success. Now why is this a bad idea? So first of all, when you do this, obviously you lose a lot of information because a lot of the people on the left hand side of the distribution are very different from one another. And so even though they're very different from one another, they are still mixed together into the same group. Likewise, in group two, the higher performing group, you also have a huge range of values from 100 to over 140. And all those people are basically treated as the same. So you would be losing a lot of information about individual differences. Also, if you looked at scores that are close to the median, such as for example, an IQ score of 98, which would be slightly below the median and therefore assigned to group one, versus a score of let's say 102, which is only slightly higher, slightly above the median of 100, but would be treated as a member of group two, then those scores are actually very similar. You can see that for between 98 and 102, there are only four IQ points. Whereas, for example, between a score of 102 and a score of 138, we have a lot more of a distance. There are a lot more differences. People with an IQ score of 102 are very different in terms of their 
potential for performance on certain jobs as compared to individuals who have an IQ score of 138. And so these people would still end up in the same group in group two, even though they are much more different than are people with an IQ score of 102 versus an IQ score of 98. And likewise, if we have an individual with an IQ score of 65, which is very low, then this would be an individual who is very different in terms of cognitive functioning from an individual with an IQ score of 98, and yet they would be in the same group. So that doesn't make a whole lot of sense conceptually. And also it has statistical consequences because as a result of that, we increase the error variance, the residual or within group variance that is then uh, an issue, for example, for statistical power when we conduct a t-test or when we conduct analysis of variance, because in that case, we would like to have groups that have as much homogeneity within group as possible. And in that case, so say we would basically maximize inter-individual differences within the groups, which is a bad thing for statistical power and also is a bad thing for uh, in terms of throwing away information about differences between people. So we have all that information about differences between people because we have a continuous variable. So why would we want to throw that away and not use it? So why so say, would we do that and why would we um, not want to look at the scores as is in terms of meaning quantitative scores scores where there's a lot of inter-individual differences and those are reflected in the scores. Also, we would make a lot of errors potentially because statistically speaking, a score of 98 versus a score of 102, which here would end up in different groups, may not be statistically different from one another due to measurement error. We know that scores on psychological tests and other tests are not perfectly reliable. So there's some measurement error attached to these scores. And so this is a concept that's well known from classical test theory, where, this, where there's a standard error of measurement that is attached to each score. And so really a score of 98 versus a score of 102 they may not be statistically different. Those might be individuals actually who may have the same IQ level and yet they are put into two different groups. And so that does not make a ton of sense then to um, treat them as different people and that further increases the error variance in the analysis. So you can see that when we dichotomize a distribution like that of a continuous variable, we lose a lot of information. We increase the within group variance or error variance, and thus we decrease our statistical power to find group differences, to find relationships between variables. And that's completely unnecessary because there are so many statistical procedures available that deal with quantitative variables with continuous variables. And those are powerful and easy to apply statistical methods that are actually in many ways simpler than methods for categorical data analysis, such as logistic regression analysis. So having continuous variables is a good thing. So you should use that and not dichotomize them, not throw the information away and then use models or methods for categorical data that doesn't make a lot of sense. So then what would be a better approach in this case if you wanted to learn about the relationship between IQ scores as continuous scores and job success also continuous in terms of the amount of dollars earned per year? What could you do? You could just simply do a correlation analysis where you calculate the Pearson product moment correlation between the IQ scores and the outcome variable job success or earnings in dollars. And then you would avoid this problem of dichotomization and you could learn about the relationship between IQ scores and job success. Or you could run a linear regression analysis where the IQ scores are the independent or predictor variable and the job success scores 
are the dependent variable that you predict from IQ scores and that's closely related to a Pearson product moment correlation analysis. And that would be much better than dichotomizing the variable like this and then running a t-test or in case of a dependent variable running a logistic regression analysis with a dichotomous outcome variable that actually previously was a continuous variable. So then why do people do this? Why is it still common in at least some areas to dichotomize continuous variables? One reason may be that individuals have not learned about statistical methods for continuous variables. Maybe they don't know about linear regression analysis or they maybe don't know about correlation analysis. And so then all they know how to do maybe is a t-test. And so then they look at, okay, where are my groups? I want to compare groups. I can't do that unless I dichotomize my IQ score variable because otherwise I don't end up with groups and I don't know what to do. So say with my continuous variable. And that's probably the most common reason that in a field, in a given field, group comparisons are the method of choice. And then when you don't have groups, you kind of want to have the groups or create the groups by dichotomizing the variables. However, this isn't a good idea. So it's better to educate oneself about methods for continuous variables, regression analysis, correlation analysis, path analysis, structural equation modeling, and so on, which allow us to keep our continuous variables as is as continuous variable so we don't lose information we don't unnecessarily reduce our statistical power and we don't end up with results that are suboptimal i hope you found this video useful to learn more about the negative consequences of dichotomizing continuous variables please don't forget to check out the description for additional resources and i'll see you next time